Christ died for our sins. You notice that it's not singular, it's plural. There's a story of a true story of a man that was on a, on a bus and he was talking to this lady. And at the end of the conversation, you know, he thought, wow, this lady really knows, really knows Jesus. And at the end of the conversation, she stood up and said this, Christ has done his 99%, we have to do our 1%. No, because if Christ pays for, covers my sin with his blood, if he pays for my debt, 99%, and those last five to ten days of my life, that one percent is left uncovered, right? That one percent is on me, and I have to pay for it. So when Jesus is paying for the sins of others, the lies, the theft, the lust, the rebellion, the idolatry, right? So Aaron Wentz is not sinless. I might sin less. Praise the Lord. I, I do sin I think, less. <laughs> I do sin less than what I did when, before I knew the Lord, but is Aaron Wentz sinless? No. Lies, theft, lust, rebellion, idolatry, those are all things that Christians are faced with all the time. And so we need a Savior yesterday. We need a Savior today. We need a Savior tomorrow. We need a Savior who would pay for and remove sins, past, present, and even what? future. So Jesus, this heavenly king, is paying for. So you, can you see what's happening here? When someone does not understand the gospel and they hear a false message, every religion, every denomination, every person is saying, I've got to put in my 1%. I've got to put in my 5%. And they're going to hand God their report card of their good deeds on judgment day. And they're going to hand the holy, perfect king their report card. And we know what's going to happen when, when they hand their dirty, flawed report card to a perfect God, don't we? It's going to be game over. It's not going to be good enough. But if somebody perfect absorbs my consequences, past, present, and future, so that I could be totally guilt-free, that's called good news. That's called the gospel. That's good news.